Howdy y'all! Squashy is back with a detailed breakdown of the best bowling games available on virtual reality platforms. My primary goal here is to identify where these games excel and, and fall short in achieving the desired sport, both individually and in comparison to the others. But first, I think comparing virtual sport experiences has to come with some moderate level of real life experience, just as a comparison. While I may not be a consistent bowler now, I did participate in a bowling league from 3rd to 5th grade in middle school, so as you guess, I'm kind of a big deal. But in all seriousness, I don't know anything about oil pattern differences and custom ball weighting for effective spinning. I do, however, have some experience on how a bowling ball should feel, how pins should fly, and how good form feels. Without further ado, let's dive in. We're looking at two main games today, 4VR Bowl and Premium VR Bowl. From the time you load in, each game markets itself a little differently. Once you select the play option, Premium VR Bowl presents you with an option to switch through tons of oil patterns to play on, just attempt experience and beginner bowlers to believe it's more realistic in nature. On the other hand, 4VR avoids a lot of the bowling vocabulary to kind of draw you into a more community style feel of like a pub, where beginners are celebrated as much as the experience. And you know, this seems to be directly correlated to the quality of the physics in each game. They're pretty close, but Premium VR has the most robust feel to it. Mistakes and throws felt like they were my fault, and successes made me feel as though I had achieved something. I had done something well. Getting a great spin in any game felt distant from reality though. Premium depends on the angle of the wrist at launch and 4VR was about how much you twisted your wrist during the process, at least for getting spin in general. You can just toss them both down the lane. Both aren't ideal, but Premium's version felt a little easier to adjust and, and be consistent with, which is an important in a competitive atmosphere. While 4 had me twisting my wrist like how I imagined pros would do it when I first bowled as a kid, just kind of wailing around there, holding the ball with the top of my hand and twisting away. This is far from accurate. On top of the overall feel, Premium VR also gives you very granular options to edit how the ball is built, lane friction, and how the pins interact. Ability to edit these really pulls you into the realism, but I mean, I don't fully understand. <laughs> I would be remiss, however, if I didn't mention how 4VR provides their own solution to giving the player many options. 4VR really shines in its unique environments and collectathon style easter egg hunts for balls through accomplishing goals in game and, and searching environments for hidden gems. You can collect 200 plus bowling balls. Some are built for different styles of play, have special abilities, or just look dang cool. They have spherical aquariums, electrostatic displays, and country flags to rep. In addition to the lane environments, they're much more unique and inspired than premiums. You can play in a disco bar, you can play in an underwater aquarium. It's just fun. The colors and the custom sounds bring a lighter atmosphere to the game. Premium VR sticks with a more realistic shtick by bringing to life real-life bowling alleys that are unique in and of themselves, such as Paradise Lanes. But because of this, they lose out on more of the hardcore crowd of achievement hunters and collective hunters, not the hardcore crowd of realism, which is what 4 kind of misses on. 4VR is hidden balls add a reason to explore the environments you're in, as opposed to just sitting at the lane and throwing balls. Because of this, the movement as a person in the bowling alley is vastly superior. Moving in premium VR bowl outside of the four step approach is, is just bad. You move slow and glitch into textures all the time. When I was playing online with four plus people, outside of talking to people, I couldn't enjoy exploration. That being said, that may have been a design choice as there's very, very little to explore in premium. Both of the games play best when you have room to do kind of a real life four step approach and toss, but they play perfectly well for sitting or standing in one place. The only thing you need is room to toss the ball out with your hand, which is the case in most VR games. Neither of the games provide provide much in the way of colorblindness adjustments or, or button only inputs for folks with limited movement options at home, but I think that's a fair representation of what the games intend to do. I tried finding multiplayer matches a couple of different times for both of the games, and I found that joining premium VR rooms was a lot more straightforward, and, and they filled quicker than the same style rooms in 4VR. Premium VR is focused on, on realism and physics, not to mention its availability on PC VR, and Rift has wanted a more dedicated cult following. 
And in addition to the random rooms, also has monthly leagues that it hosts and plays. 4VR does a similar setup for seasonal play, but it seems to be lacking in the number of players that are on at a given time. And this is something you would never really know from either of the game's discords. Both discords are largely dead, with conversation only really being from hardcore enthusiasts in premium and random new people in 4VR's discord. The age group did seem to be slightly more mature in premium, if that's something you're looking for, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And it might only kind of help draw those people who are 18 over, 24 and over, things like that. I only bring up the Discord because I've noticed in VR, with it being kind of a more niche community, how devs run their Discord server and how they market it and how they communicate with everybody can really be a telling difference in the future of multiplayer for a game. But both kind of were handled the same way. So at the end of the day, what are my overall impressions? 4VR is, is heavily gamified and marketed, and it's the one that you're going to see the most in ads and, and on the Oculus Quest storefront. However, premium VR just does bowling just a little better. The realistic physics and environments make the game feel like a real bowling alley, and with straightforward designs that allow you to get right out to the lane and bowl, it's my choice. At the end of the day, they're not that much different, and if, if your friends have 4VR or your friends have premium VR, get the one that your friends have, just because these are games that are only really a blast when you're getting to play with people and connect. You know, that's the beauty of kind of these social VR games, especially the casual sport VR games, is you kind of get to see a body, a head talking. It just allows you to be close to people. And, and I think that 4VR and premium VR do that very, very well. They do bowling well. If you're kind of the first person in and you're like, I want to get a bowling game, I don't know which one to get, and I want to have a confidence in its future to have multiplayer, I choose premium VR, but it is, again, it's a narrow lead. 4VR is still a fun bowling game, and the environments are much neater to experience as well. However, I think the gamification of the sport goes a bit too far and can cause confusion. Premium VR is going to be my way to go, but both are great. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate your time and viewership. If you'd like to join the community, I host monthly VR tournaments and community nights in my Discord. I would love for you to drop by, say hi, and get involved. On top of that, we are always talking about new news and events in social and casual sport VR. Look forward to seeing you around.